Welcome to the Fat Cats Rugby Podcast, bringing you candid rugby conversations, great interviews and insights into Ugandan rugby, and a touch of rugby in Africa and the world over. Fat Cats Rugby Podcast is a product of Fat Cats Media Brand for all your audiovisual content needs and equipment hire. Hope you enjoy this episode. Another week, another Fat Cats edition, and this one is quite full. It's a litter of cats and uh, Fat Cats at that. We have quite a collection. I mean, every, everywhere the camera will turn today, you'll see it is a fat, huge cat there. But of course, the conversation is rugby and rugby and more rugby. So I won't stress you much. My name is Lewis Semju. I have Edwin Wabura with me. I have uh, Dungu Joseph. I have Robin Kihumuro. There is uh, Bruno, the realtor with the sheds, uh, and then we have uh, the, all, the, the, the other corporate, Caesar. And uh, of, uh, you, you'll be listening to, to them and their runs and their opinions, so I don't want to bore you so much with the introduction because we have a lot on the plate to, to dissect. Gentlemen, how are you doing? I'm alive. That's Everyone important. Alive. We're good, we're good. They, they're all good. Uh, I believe uh, they had some lunch. And uh, are you waiting. sure about that? Did you saw Dongo's beans So, Dongo, do you confirm the beans for lunch or it's just Wahala? I ate food, guys. <laughs> 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 the food was really actually. Uh, Dongo, I, I believe the beans gave you en- enough energy to set us off. Uh, it's the international calendar, and uh, very many people were crying for um for our boys they were dealt a very hard number they had uh, they had Kenya to to go with first then you know the games that followed but they had barely any test to get into these games um we want to want to start our run from there uh, how did we fail them and why the hell were we un- unable to get them some international uh, leg minutes well um, from my point of view I just want to thank the boys first and foremost these guys put their bodies on the line. I do not think they took a plane from Entebbe. They left Chadi first, took a plane to Entebbe, <laughs> and went to France to lose. You get what I mean? <laughs> Those guys really put their bodies on the line, and I want to upload them. As for, <laughs> as for the game, I really think... <laughs> I don't know what we're up to. The, the rugby president <laughs> came. I think there was uh, a launch of that Africa 7 thing at Munyonyo somewhere where they invited journalists and Senyimba was part. I think he, he was one of the guys who, who were strongly against the tournament being taken to France. Now, coming to where we failed the guys, one, we did not get them enough uh, test games or we did not get them prepared. And like people say, garbage in, garbage, garbage. out. Oh, okay. wow. oh, These are guys wow. who have trained for six weeks. Six weeks. You're playing against Kenya that camped in South Africa for three months. We keep saying these things. You get what I mean? You can't beat preparation, however good you are. I mean, our guys are good. You have guys who have played at such a stage and you believe they would show up. But show up how? They do not have the cohesion. They do not have the... They are just patching up things. You get what I mean? So, it, it was... I didn't expect anything. And I kept telling people, we are going to lose. I don't know what the rugby union thinks. Is it what fails, really? Because that's, that's the kitchen of everything. You get? They prepared themselves to fail completely. And they really did. If it's failing, there's, there's they no have money. a tick. They have a tick. No but there's ways to get money. How do, you, how do you believe people will give you money when you do not show accountability for what you have? Hey. Have you ever seen any audited, hey. Hey. any, for even a short period of time? Yeah. 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 For even a yeah. yeah. person I haven't seen anything. You get what I mean? Yeah. So, even if I have my, my money, I cannot give it to someone who can give me accountability, who, are, who is always like this. How, do the, how does our union make money? Do they sell any merchandise? When did you last buy union merchandise? So they are failing at everything, and I can give them a tick for failing. I don't know what other guys think. Caesar, I want you. I want you to, to carry this on. I want you yeah. to carry this. On. Yeah. Well, I really share some sentiments with Dongo. Um, we can't. You can't beat anything without preparation. Don't. Okay. We don't have money. Fine. Get get a few games. First comes all these other things we are doing. But, you, we, they flaunted now special everywhere, billions and billions of money. Man, that money is useless to us because we don't see what, if we don't build the rugby, the national team, which is what really 
brings out what we are doing as a club, as a club and everything. Man, I want to say something. When we are going to set up a union or a management of our sports, let's stop doing that nonsense of this guy played, this guy has been in rugby. Man, your leader, players are not leaders. Not all players are leaders. Not all legends are leaders. Which means let's, Edwin, let's Edwin, Edwin can't lead us because well, he, he's maybe he's a leader. Man. I don't know. Edwin. I'm, I'm, I'm coming for CEO. Eyes, so I'm not so sure. <laughs> ah, I'm not so, not so coming for president. You want CEO? I want but CEO. We should, get, we should get guys in. Okay. That, you we should get guys in that, in that know what they're doing. <laughs> we should get guys in that know what they're doing because really we failed our boys. The fact that we even won those last two games, man, me, I was very elated because I did not expect we got coaches in. Coaches, in, we got our national team coaches in the middle of the league. I hope you guys know. Yeah. We fired the coach who took us to that tournament. Then we got the coach in the middle of the league. We didn't give him chance. We, we, we gave him six weeks. Six weeks to coach these boys. And then we were playing a team, a, a team that went, even if they went for one month. But the fact that they went and played proper rugby opponents, not barbarians, not barbarians, not under 20 kids. You don't expect them to go on the national <laughs> stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, allow me to ask Caesar this question. I'm told the boys were being paid uh, 30k per session and they were training twice a day. So roughly that's 60k you are getting out of rugby on national team for a day. I don't know about the monthly. Mm. And Kenya, I don't know how much they are being paid. But I'm told, I hear Mbu in the corridors, they, for that whole SA seven, three months, they earn 17 million each. Yeah. I had. You, but you see, you see, even that 60k is so is, hard for the union because if they did that 60k every every training session and then they elongate, the, let me tell you, we all know we have shorter days of training because union doesn't want to pay the players enough money because probably they don't have it or probably some guy at TBWA has the money held somewhere. I do not know why they do that. But honestly, you do not I see us I see us pointing fingers and everything. I won't pretend like I know anything, but I want to ask. Um the, the figure I think that has been flaunted around is nine point eight billion yeah. over I don't know how many years. But is this money actually there? We say this money is there, we are having challenges with organizing uh, fr uh, international friendlies, we are having challenges with payments apparently, we are also now not even having uh, the local leagues go on. So where exactly is this money? Me, I just want to ask a question. Maybe because um, we, we may maybe, assume that maybe he knows. He's been maybe very he quiet. knows because even the maybe way he's wearing shit, yeah. like, yeah. like, like, like men in black, what agent no, Smith? Like, not not taking corners. Yeah. The union doesn't have money. So Bruno, and, you know, the it's money is not in circulation. It's high time Niall Special put that money in circulation. The money, the money is coming. No, we the money is there. The money is there. It's the coming. The money will be there. No more. No more. No, but no we, more. We have no had, more paper. Uh, I think we have had chair, uh, chairman of uh, clubs uh, complain that they always receive, let's say, take for instance that uh, the 15th season uh, has started like let's say in uh, around October, November. They always get that money which is uh, the 10 million provided that you have met all the KPIs uh, after the season has ended. So I don't know maybe... last season's money? I don't know. But you see, one thing I also want to, to point out is we, we are so quick to point fingers to the union and everything. But the same chairman, are these the people that vote the leaders that are there that uh, maintain the same uh, failed systems that are happening. So yeah. isn't the real problem the chairman? Yes, it is. Also, some, me, I think, some, some chairman. All of them, please, somewhere. <laughs> all of them. And also, I want to say something. We need to find a solution to this. And there is only one solution. Let's agree. We won some tournaments as sevens, our seven setup, but we were not doing that overly well. And then we made the brilliant decision: separate sponsorship. Let Guinness take sevens. Let now special stay with the union, with the training. And Guinness did everything, and we went out. Man, now special saw Guinness was breaking them. They came and bullied us into so, taking. I'm also, lastly, Louis, I think the national team should be a separate entity from the rugby sponsor. Let's get a sponsor for the national side, who gives us money for the national <coughs> team, who allows to get, I am telling you, when we get separate everything, separate management, separate, like the FA and in soccer, like separate everything, the national team management from rugby union management. 
I'm telling okay. you, we shall get that sponsorship. But every single money, what gets us money is a national team. Union knows that, they can't release it. <coughs> Before you go to another talking, speaking topic, yeah. or maybe, I just wanted to just... <laughs> just did you some down stuff? <laughs> yeah, yes I did. <laughs> 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 you see, this, this is social life, you get what I mean? The union and whatever it does with the money, I feel like now special is that one X that you keep going back to. You get eh. they are toxic. How uh, how, uh, how, uh, how how personal is is, is this reference? Who has had to do today? Just continue to edit. Just continue to edit. Someone, we're going to check the tree of now special and mirror down on that person. It's high time we also we also did the check on our sponsor. We are so much dancing to, to the sponsor's tune. tunes that we get excited at the beginning when the figure is announced in a presser and then the execution, the real money is now hard to get. Right now, they took up everything. Sevens, fifteens, uh, the ladies side. But this is the same sponsor three weeks ago. The most performing ladies in the circuit We are getting T-shirts of Nile Special. Helen was livid about that. Promotion Very livid. And you are the same sponsor that announced 9.8 billion, not even medals for a circuit. It was so embarrassing. I, I don't know how they think about it, but the fact that we've been so much dancing to their tunes, I mean, they take us for granted. In some instances, the union want to be fat cats. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, Ed Edwin, I know you have uh, a little uh, working experience with with, uh, with with corporate. So, where are we failing as uh, should I say the rugby community in selling our game to the corporate entities? Because, like Caesar says, maybe we actually have to separate these things. We have we have to be treating uh, the the 15th national team differently, sevens different women. You know everything. How are we going to get there? Because it looks like the people in leadership want our ideas, so take it away. Um, finally, I'm brought it to the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we'll start with uh, leadership. I think corporates want to deal with a face they can trust, someone who they believe and who aligns uh, the growth of the game goals alongside the growth of their brand. I think uh, the fact that we have said uh, we have taken us for granted and whatever, but I think why Nile and Uganda Rugby Union forever be together is because we have grown their brand and they will consistently come back and give you whatever money you, wa you want because without, without rugby, not saying Nile is not a good brand, but I'm saying Without rugby, Nile would, would would take a hit. You see what I mean? But rugby has grown with Nile. I don't know if you guys remember, you guys must have watched rugby yesterday. But before, <laughs> the sponsor of uh, the Cranes was UBL. They used to put on Bell Bell Lager. 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 You get it? Eh? Mm. So the, our association with the beer industry is, is strong. But, so but, but guys, you see, it's, it's world war, rugby and beer. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, it's not going away. Just get ready, another 10 <laughs> years of Nairo. But back to the issue. The key thing is leadership. I think uh, aspects of leadership come in very handy when you're going to talk to sponsors. You always wonder why the football guys, and we'll always bring back this example, why the football guys will always get injection of money and whatever. It comes down to aspects of leadership. I mean, I won't mention his names, but you know, the man for president, MP. Two hearts, the game will grow. You see what I mean? That's just an example. But not an indictment on the leadership right now. We are speaking in third person here. But I mean, we, 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 can, we can do a lot more when it comes to that. We have had... Uh, our boys win uh, Africa Sevens. We save for maybe Ministry of Education officials and uh, NCS officials. I don't think we have been recognized beyond that. They, they, were, they were hosted by the first son. 
oh yeah there's that what did they but get was at a party what did they get it was at a party <laughs> we <laughs> were talking about <laughs> we were talking about real What's wrong with engagements <laughs> i don't know <laughs> we're talking about real engagements where the recognition is very key yeah. not to say that the other recognitions are minimal but we're saying that for <clears throat> fans to also come in and say that they're engaged in the game we need to see such i mean all these guys are our friends and that's the unique thing about rugby why it hurts us so much is because you see the guys actually put in the hard work i mean we don't watch maybe too much football here but you don't know what a vipers guy a KCA guy does to get there so when the guy comes on the pitch and the game is bad you utter everything but for your guys even when you come on a podcast like this you still try to protect your guy because you know your guy beyond the rugby itself yeah so now it hurts you as fans to see players you know personally mm. affected by that so i think the aspect of leadership comes in and also back to the other side when it comes to the corporate sponsorship why do they come in and get out that's another thing that you should look at from uh, the sponsor's perspective because if i have a team say for if my strategy as a business has changed why would i leave a team that is successful if or if a team is marketing my 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 brand in the league and i put in money for two seasons why is it in season three i'm not there what is it about uh rugby clubs themselves now i'm putting on a corporate hat what is it about rugby clubs that they are not doing right to secure save for the aspect of say a company says that you know what we are now changing our business we are no longer interested in the ugandan market we are going to focus in kenya save for that that usually happens always strange change your strategy trust me i think if uh, an entity sees that there is requirement to change their strategy but the rugby club the sponsor is bringing them mileage they will always find money to channel for that rugby club so it's very important that that is done and then you so for us to grow again and get uh corporates on board as fans what do we do do we watch the games i mean uh, look at the game of uh, pirates hidden's uh, last season that title decide of sorts you saw how king's park was filled to the brim stan big bank came and launched flexi pay everyone was using flexi pay to drink beer of 2k yeah yeah. See what I mean, eh? Because they knew Caesar, you they were going to have numbers. They knew they were going to make, they were going to have numbers. <laughs> now, when it came to the next game against Cubs, I, I, the numbers first of all dwindled. Maybe it's because Pirates had failed at that point to put up a fight. So maybe the Cubs game would have been bigger. But that's what we're trying to say. That even if I come as a corporate to sponsor your league. What am I getting in terms of mileage? mileage. If I'm an insurance company, sure. you say you want me to insure to give medical cover for the national team, am I going to get, you know, we're the same guys who like drinking and saying sponsors don't come. And then when a sponsor comes and says, hello, we have a new package, you're like, ah, no, 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 I'm not interested. So you're the same, we, we fans are the same guys yes, who, yes, give, who, who, who give these this corporates say that, you know what? Yeah, the rugby guys are good and whatever, but when it comes to sponsorship even when i i took their my i remember last time this guy bought me a jibo thing to buy <laughs> <laughs> i have the bottle in office no, yeah well, my can jibo thing so you see <laughs> if, if, if you're like jibo and you come and you say to i'm going to i'm going to i want to i i, I part sponsor cobs and you say that want to put our products there partner guys guys don't okay partner cobs guys don't come guys will not buy so even me i'll also as a corporate i'll sit back and say uh uh-huh, these guys let me not put in too much. So, it is a three ping test, to say the least. The yeah, leadership, the fans themselves. You said you knew and English. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you it's can go ahead one. now. Three pong. Pong test. Yes. Okay. okay you, 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 you have learned something new today. I'll Google it. I'll learn something. I'll write it on your notepad. While we're talking sponsorship, um, I don't want us to... Uh, to run risk of uh, losing our, our residential sponsors so uh, allow me to pass this piece of information we are being sponsored uh, for the venue by fred and winnie bnb located in kisasi which is a homestead it's uh, featuring tens of contained private bedrooms 
consisting of two deluxe doubles, one, uh, one deluxe twin, three standard doubles, and two standard twin bedrooms. These units come with a fully equipped kitchen, power backup system, so even if women misbehaves, you'll be catered for Wi-Fi, laundry services, and a personal chef to cater to your meal needs. Guests at the Fred and Winnie b and enjoy a sumptuous buffet breakfast with a choice of selected tropical fruits and juices. Pick up and drop off to and from the Interior International Airport, as well as local transportation for getting around. All for up country trips can be arranged if booked in advance. So, for bookings, don't call Dungu, but call this number 0752-693-369. I'll say again, 0752-693-369. Sound ah. what? Wait, wait, wait a minute. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Okay, I, I wasn't ready for that. But oh. I'm sure they're soundproof. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, so, Dongo, while we were making the announcement for the soundproof rooms, did you Google three point test? I'll Google after the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy a band. <laughs> <laughs> Most sponsorship, courtesy of the Fred and Winnie BNB. <laughs> These things happen. These things happen. So uh, I want to take our next run to the Sevens calendar. Uh, I believe that's where uh, the name Uganda Constellation Union came from. We became a UC of some sort instead of URIU. Um, <coughs> we had Meleke Seven supposed to happen, then uh, they were, were called off and were given the reason of, uh, you know, getting a thin steam ready for a, a, a stretched calendar. So probably, yeah, you know. Uh, then the stretched calendar also got cancellations. I mean, um, it's safe to say that Kenya feels too good for Uganda this year, but our good union um, hasn't uh, told us when actually the, the sevens uh, are going to start. I have, I have this with authority from the VP technical. He says that dates were just moved just that so we don't know whether they will move to december move to january next year or move to august so i want us to start from there this kind of uncertainty how is it going to kill the clubs because i uh, you know clubs have players and also this, these players have other things they're doing how is this going to affect uh, the setup of the clubs and the preparation ruben i want to start with you here i think first and foremost it has messed up our calendar in general um, we knew that usually around August, actually late July, actually early July, that we are starting with our sevens. But we have now messed up our calendar. Uh, I, I saw a sort of a hint um, from uh, the Warriors uh, saying that um, the Mileke sevens might be uh, the week after Zimbabwe, if we even still have Zimbabwe anyway. Might be isn't concrete. Yes, isn't concrete. But that's the whole point. Now we are in a stage where we are disorganized, which also goes back to what Edwin was saying. You, we want Want to call on sponsors but you're not even sure about your own programs or they are seeing these things in the media where now you have something now it's cancelled one week to all the, the 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 stakeholders involved people that have gotten to spend money what kind of picture is it putting out for uh, for, for everyone I still believe uh, especially the cancellation of Elgon Cup is a is, is a dungu curse and they, they refuse to give him a chance to to influence for them to tell guys to go and watch the game against Uganda and Kenya uh. and uh, a few days later uh, Kenya uh, said they are not going to come. I, I I don't think that's a coincidence in my opinion. Dongo, please address this from us right now when they're still fresh. You need a guys. lawyer? You need a lawyer? <laughs> guys are applying guys. themselves now. Guys, uh, what I think about what Ruben has just said is it's like preparing to go for a date. Hmm? And your data so not this relationship analogy <laughs> guys, killing me. <laughs> the person you are going to meet there has not confirmed. They are telling you that they are still stuck somewhere. And they are not confirming where they will come. They have actually not mentioned. So for you go ahead to book, you prepare, you go sit there. What kind of person are you? What kind of person do you think you are? Aren't you playing yourself? That's what we just did. Yeah, that's, that's what true. That's what we did. Kenya at no one point mentioned the Elgon Cup and coming in Uganda. Looking forward, goes back to how prepared we are, how prepared we are. Let us not think this is just viewed locally. You are a rugby union of a country, 
okay? You are the stakeholders of that sport in that particular country. People look at whatever you do, whatever happens, at how organized you are. Kenya hooped us in France badly, proper in 15s, in the 15s. So them coming to Kampala, one, they personally, I believe that's an excuse of not having money. I think they can lobby and get that money. If it was important to them, they would have come. Absolutely, because they also treasure the relationship. There is, um, if they did treasure it, if they, I think they I still do, but they do not gain I, out I of it. I don't think they respect us. Well, <laughs> well, if, well, if you really had financial uh, problems, you want to tell me you realize that one week to go that now, oh, all of a sudden I'm broke. You have, as an organization, you've budgeted for they the entire They are simply year. not you've getting to anything South Africa. from you. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. They don't value us. And the, the earlier we learned that, the better. Because now we are even making our boys suffer. Our, our team, did we beat Kenya in the under-20s? No, we lost. We lost. What kind of rugby are we setting up? It's a win that matters at the end of the day. Mm. Okay? So if we are continuously losing to them, doesn't matter how they win the games, they look at the kind of opposition they're having. In December this year, teams met in South Africa. There's US, Spain, Kenya, Zimbabwe, and they're going to be playing. Those are tire, lower tier teams tire in Africa. Two. Tier 2, yes. Mm. They're going to be playing against uh, the Greek ones. Those are curry cup teams in South Africa. Mm. Greek ones, Pumas, and the Cheetahs. What kind of opposition are they going to get? The exposure. They are, they are going to be exposed to high quality, facility, strength and conditioning. The kind of coaches. Never know. You, you can only get better when you only assess as the quality of opposition you have. As we are comfortable playing, an under 20 side that's just patched up and training at Impis. You're getting kids like Cheki, who is on holiday from Moobs, and he's, he's <laughs> just on a cheese. You got what I mean? No, but you know, you know what I mean? You got what I mean? This is a, and that's I, the I, kind I, of competition you're getting. You're getting your players to camp in Ginger because you, you want to take them out, out, of, out of Kampala. Maybe it works, but we need to evolve, okay? Let us stop looking at quick fix things. On they Saturday, do. Zimbabwe will be playing Uganda. That's if they play. And I don't know, some people already say they will only pay to all I wish if they, they see the fly half raising the ball. Yeah, that's when they'll confirm. That the game is on. You get what I mean? But if we stop these quick fix things, how can we make quick money? How can we, we make interest charges? Let us look at a longer term, okay? We're not going to play the reaper charge. Kenya will. Okay? The exposure. Let us look at our players. How many of them will be at the next competition? We already, I don't think we shall have international rugby anymore for, for the 15th, for the whole of this year. How are you keeping this bunch of players? Are you, are you counting the Victoria Cup game or no? Victoria Cup game is simply a game to make money. I think, personally, I think... The, I think he has some points. The, what I think <laughs> is because Elkhorn Cup was set to happen on that day mm -hmm. and bookings were made elsewhere. You're booking with KCCA, you're booking with police, Service you've paid off... Even all guys who have... Must have been asking influencers, questions. you've cashed even if they take a 50k. <laughs> <laughs> you got what I mean? You've paid all these guys. How, how can, you can't afford to make such a loss. Because there's no more international uh, 15s rugby. There's some players who are going to be remain redundant and they're going to play against... Same local teams. You got what I mean? And you want the same guys to show up. We are lying to ourselves. We've dressed up to a debt, confirmed everything. Our debt has not phoned us. And they've not phoned us. To me, so, I, think, I think all this mess in the calendar now is exposing how, how we are not proactive as leaders of the union. Because, I mean, you, you are facing the reality at a time because you didn't prepare for it. It also exposes how we are running the sport without structures. Bruno, what do you mean by structures? We throw these words around. Let's break it down <laughs> to the nitty gritties. We like throwing, we want, let people know what are structures? Who are these people? How are we running the sport? Let, let's just talk, have that talk, guys. No, huh? the, the, the leadership clearly of our sport is now exposing how we just hold um, events. Yes. Ticking boxes. We're just ticking boxes. We are more at an event than how an event will run, who is coming, who, sh who shall we need most with priorities. Mm. Because you can't tell me you've done all the publicity of the Elgon Cup, but the person you are, you, are, you are inviting is not sure. You are pushing from one end and the other end is relaxed. What is that? Meaning you didn't prepare, you didn't give them a lot, Early before they may have their reasons for for having not come, but still, that's that's something we should know. 
they are not coming from Ali. Ali. You get? So you and then and then we can we can find other ways. And also this cancellation shows us how we should get away from this Kenya thing, Kenya versus Uganda, all the way. Yearly, every year we have to play Kenya, Elgon Cup, Elgon Cup, no. Now is the time to look at our neighbors. Mind you, this sport shall not grow if we don't if you if you, if you don't engage also our regional members. I I understand South Sudan is is, is building something. Let, let us bring them. We can give them a rums too or rums and they play. Our boys can also <laughs> play them in the land. They get mm. Rwanda, Tanzania. Burundi. Burundi. Yeah. If we push to those countries, mm -hmm. that's how we also push now to to because let's say we get four wins in a row with our with our challengers. Now we get to Zim. We also invite Namibia or we go to Namibia. You get? Yes. Not this Kenya in out, in out. Uh, and and we, those Kenyan guys are leaving us. Caesar, you can continue. Is, I have two views to this. And a suggestion after that. One. Um I'm very disappointed with the union and how we had a calendar when we started. I don't know who agrees on this calendar. I'm assuming chairman come in. I'm assuming chairman come in and they agree on a calendar and the clubs agree on a calendar. The fact that we have to set in tournaments and games against Kenya, we have to push our calendar so that we play a team that hasn't even yet confirmed. I'm very disappointed in Kenya. I know you all are blaming the union. I'm also very disappointed in Kenya, Kenya, honestly. disrespected us. That was disrespect. If they knew they were not coming, tell us a month ago, this year, due to unforeseen financial issues or whatever reason they use, <coughs> we are not coming for Elgon Cup. But to keep quiet and the week or two weeks before the tournament, they yeah, call us off because what Dungu said, they don't get anything from us, they don't do anything. And let me tell you, I beg to differ. <laughs> I really think Kenya gets a lot from Uganda. But that is me. I feel like when we set a calendar, when we set a calendar, let's follow suit. Let's follow the calendar. If And also, we are trying to grow rugby, like Bruno said. All of a sudden, we come up with a stretched plan to take rugby in other regions of the country. Sevens rugby in other regions of the country. It worked last year with very many strains on the clubs, the said clubs. But the clubs honored because not honoring is catastrophic. Let the union come. If that if they don't have money, yes they don't. Or if they fail to lobby like Dubwa said, let us we use what we have and fit in the calendar. My suggestion personally is we cancel sevens, let our players rest. Let the teams rest. Let's fit, let's start a new calendar. Let's start with Uganda Cup. Me, this is my suggestion. Because if we keep pushing tournaments, then we'll have a situation where we have seven seven tournaments week after week after week. We are killing our players. The mess are, continues. Yeah. They are not resting. From seventh, we are ticking boxes. From seventh, we are going to Uganda Cup. Box tick. Transfer window. Uh, transfer window. <laughs> <laughs> Cobb steals some Paris players. Then we are playing in the league. Then we are playing in the league. Then we are playing in the league. No. And, then, and then we are playing in the league. You see how our players are not getting enough rest. They are not getting the preparation they need to play these very important tournaments. Then we feed the national team with tired, injured players. And then... Dungu's statement comes garbage in, garbage, garbage out, that. and then we come and <laughs> blame that. the coaches. I Me, I think, we should come up as a union, as a rugby fraternity, we should come up with a calendar, and this calendar should be set in stone, dates. If we ask Kenya a month, two months before, are you coming for Elgon Cup? No. Let's get, get Burundi. Let's play the East African tournament, rugby championship. I don't agree with that. That's we play, no, we play, it's, it's a good example, I think. Play, I'm giving an example. So we we'll set up a, a calendar exactly. and follow the calendar to the dot. But this stuff, of because we are lesser than Kenya in... My dear, Kenya was bigger than us in sevens. We made them look like kids. Yeah. Now our boys are confident <laughs> enough. We want to beat Kenya and Commonwealth. Of course. Confidence. Of course. Of course. are changing. Yeah. So that no sense of Kenya doesn't benefit from us. They disrespected us. And I hope to God that Kenya to come and play Gold Cup again. They beg. <laughs> that no sense of us. They are available next year. We go no. Let's all, let us yeah. also say we don't have I money and we don't play Gold Cup. We will play other teams. I mean, hopefully Zim comes. 
and if Zen comes this year, maybe next year we can okay after no, World we Cup maybe. we can, can get Namibia. We can lobby some and money. We can even have like Zim and then maybe Zambia. Zambia. Then, yeah. then you see, the thing team. is that and the fact I'm sorry for yeah, for, okay, for okay. Uh, jumping in, but okay. the fact that we have reached a point where. Uh, we're not qualifying for 2023 Rugby World Cup. Yes. Let us now go back to the drawing board totally. Um, I love some of the players that are on that team that have really still raised their hands, like for instance Scott Olodge, but um, I don't think he's going to be the, our answer four years from now. He can become so, like an Al Aluwine Jones. We can always have them in the system to keep uh, mentoring the players. <laughs> yeah. But now let us center the core of the team around the younger players. Yeah. Yeah. Build, like they were saying, that play some uh, invitational games with our with our neighbors yes, in, yes. in the region. We should, like we used to have a Uganda A side. What happened to it? You don't just throw someone into the the rugby cranes, rugby cranes. In, in in a quarter final yeah. against Kenya, and you think that that you you, you should expect uh, magic or miracles. So let's have the Uganda A. Let's have the under twenty. Let them play uh, against those teams. Get a bit of test. Then uh, as we are planning for uh, Zimbabwe, Zambia, maybe if we can also get the resources, Senegal. Cote d'Ivoire, uh, teams that are more, uh, they are bigger in stature than us, so it's, it's a physical contest, so that we get them used to playing with sides that are bigger. But let us also note, put us, we put ourselves in a position where we really, really depend a lot on Kenya, mm -hmm. and that's why they can do all this hogwash to us, honestly. And uh, maybe to finish, Louis, some, something small, mine is, I mean, we all support international rugby, Australia, England, whatever. South in, Africa, in, mission. We all support We all support international rugby and let those guys employ their coaches at the beginning of the, the road. Let's stick to the same plan. We've all agreed, or oh, the union sat with their wisdom and they thought Bobby Fredo and the gentleman, I don't know his name, from South Africa, they are coaches. Let's give them the time. If they have a plan and they sold you the plan and you liked it and you threw the, away the old coach and gave them and gave the national team up, give them time. Give them, let's say our goal is 2027. Then let's stick to 2027. Let, like, uh, like Ruben has said, let's get those players in. Let's get those people in working year after year, get those tournaments in year after year. We try every player. Then by the time we reach that tournament again, we are not using three weeks to train. We have used four years to get to that level. Yeah. But let's not use the same coach this year. Fire Fredo, get B Mark. Fire B Mark, get Bobby. Fire him yeah, every year. We have a different Nimba. coach. What the hell are we doing? Edwin, thank the you. The ball is now in your. Yeah, I'll go back to what uh, Dungu said about structures. Um, I think structures are very key. No, he said break down that word. Break down, yeah, yeah, let me break it down. Let's start from TAG, for example. TAG has produced some of the best players Uganda is using right now. Mm. And TAG should be a union-funded project with a partnership with a club in England or whatever. Just speaking, it should be on board. That should be, that should be something. If go and do a powerpoint uh, presentation tell them our key players who have come from tag one two three i'll say philip aaron you guys know the rest those are the ones i can highlight and these guys have gone all the way to show you that rugby can be picked up from a young age grade and you develop into someone who does not fear entering contact that's something very key. If TAG picks up, I mean, schools will pick it up. At schools level, primary, I think it's rather, um, it will take a lot of sensitization to get schools of primary nature to play rugby, anything related really to rugby. Even if it's TAG, it's rather a game that has this perception that it's kind of rough and they like, I mean, people would play cricket in primary and they'll be like, that guy will hit you with the ball on the head or something like that. So that's an issue. Secondary, I think we need to just fasten the the note on uh, schools rugby in terms of structures. In our days, as I will tell you, we used to watch it was Coca-Cola schools rugby. Mm. Yeah. Tamam, so we rugby, need to man. get something like back like that this as soon as possible. Yeah. We need to we need to get something uh, 
I mean, going to legends, Kapala Rugby Club at the time was a thing of pride you get. So, I mean, everyone could come back to you after you have come from the bus and they, they want the jazz. What happened on the pitch? We need to get schools rugby back into schools like that. It's become something of passion. Now, I think the new thing I want to introduce <coughs> here after even under 20 is that under 20 is important. Why? You need that zone where there is a transition from schools rugby to big, to big boy rugby. Now, the under 20 tournament is very key in that. Under 20 age structure will help guys. One, you know yourselves in the schools, you have been playing each other. It will give you an opportunity to be scouted by clubs. Secondly, it gives you an opportunity not to fear anymore the contact because there's that aspect of fear. Many people don't uh, discuss this thing of uh, how you transition from schools rugby to playing club rugby. But I can tell you, all the guys we have seen who move from schools to club, there's that fear comes back, that raw fear you had when you played your first game as a rugby player comes back because now this is at a big stage. There are fans shouting who even don't know you, they don't owe you anything. So the fear is there. Now the under 20 in one way or the other can help curb those fears. If you can have a guy go and play a tournament, and this is the thing, we don't want a situation where we have started under 20 and then you say, due to no funding, we can't do under 20 this year. So it becomes a very big problem. So the four year plan is very key. So whoever is in charge of the plan should include the schools, tag, under 20. Now, there is another aspect after under 20 when you transition into club rugby. Not everyone is going to be picked for the national team. And this is where I think what Cesar was saying was very important, to get friendlies with these other countries. We don't need our Uganda team playing I will not mention countries. <laughs> I don't start another war here. But you see what I mean. We don't need to play. We don't need our top boys. Also, us, we have some swag. Mm. Let's not go and say mm. we are playing because we want to stick it to Kenya. But then we play competition and you're like, ah, I should have watched this on TV or something. You see what I mean? So, our Uganda A comes in there. Why Uganda A is because there is this aspect where there are very many potential players who... There's something missing for them to play on the national team. So they will sit somewhere. I will not mention names again. I'm so scared today. I don't know what's wrong with me. I need a shot, maybe. Yeah. But him and I have had discussions. And we've had players who would even have filled the number 12 gap in the country. For example, our good friend, Augustine Casasso. Yeah. He would have played very well. He was one time a very good center. He could carry the ball well. He could defend well. But... Now, in such a scenario, for whatever reason he's not picked, he can enter Uganda A. And you don't have a player being demoralized because he's not being picked. Yes. We don't want people to say that we're not picked because of particular clubs. Mm -hmm. If that's an option, have guys wrap it up at that point and enter Uganda A. You have the Uganda side, Uganda A, structured on the same terms of the main team. And there's no, if you enter into the main team, there's no problem. You can always gel in. Yeah. And maybe just uh, to add a quick supplement to what you yeah, said you about the transition period, I think the, the under 20 can be tied to, uh, to the universities because uh, that is another aspect of where we can get a lot of talent and we can, uh, you see, there's a challenge in, in, in just starting a, a club out or a team out of the blue. But if you tie it to something, you see, let me just use an analogy of, let's say, the Premier League. Most of those teams are tied to um, uh, their regions, Manchester, Liverpool, what? But now for us, we can copy that, but not directly copy it, maybe just the template, and tie it to universities. Universities offer, offer us something regional that they, they are spread out. And then these are institutions that have people that have a, a sense of belonging. So how about we also tie that to, uh, uh, to certain things like that so that we have maybe our shield to also be predominantly uh having the university uh, teams that we are putting ourselves in a position that we are not throwing 
19 year olds who are not yet ready uh, into a big Cubs versus Pirates game when they have not even had uh, a, a McCary versus UCU game. So uh, that was just my suggestion. Um, <clears throat> as far as run sound recommendations go, we can keep this going, but uh, unfortunately, we are losing light. But I have one last segment for the gentleman I'm still with. Let's say elections were tomorrow and everything you've spoken is going to come into effect uh, because of the position you are in. Which position would you be vying for? I'll go for CEO. CEO. Ooh. Jose? Hey. Yeah, you're bashing. Now you can see. I'm bashing. Now you can see. I'll be the communications person. Oh, safe okay. landing, eh? Safe. Uh, <laughs> Pierre and Combs. Fair enough. Okay. This this will work together. Please don't join them. They're already a fool. Operations. Operations. What does operations, operations do? Operations. What, uh, what, what do you do in operations? <laughs> what, what, what do you do in operations? <laughs> Execution, man. You execute according to your strategy. This, this man has big words. Yeah. Operation at execution. <laughs> he was already. He like, he like Zudongo. Social media, uh huh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will do the technical side. VP technical. Make sure you're an that accountant. Our players, uh, <laughs> oh, we're talking about rugby. Make sure that our players get what they are due from whatever we get from anywhere. So you, you realize in everything you've mentioned, no one has mentioned VP Komash. Komash. Because uh, ah, we you, thought that was you. I thought that was you. <laughs> <laughs> that was you. VP Komash in this country. <laughs> you want to be short. <laughs> um, so given the fact that we are, we are all running away from the VP Komash, uh, I, I, be, I believe maybe we should be cutting these guys some slack but hey who knows that's uh, a rant for some other day from the from the cuts here uh at uh, fred and when bnb and the crew recording I, I would like to thank everyone who has been watching us and we shall hope to be seeing you at the next recording as well we are out and uh, we are going to enjoy a few drinks here and there goodbye cheers cheers Thanks for listening in. Share with us your thoughts from today's episode. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.